Dear students, now we are going to discuss waveguide dispersion in detail. It is a type of intramodal dispersion in optical communication system. It causes pulse spreading or pulse broadening effect in a single mode fiber. When an input optical signal is given to this fiber cable, at the output side we can get the output signal with pulse broadening effect. Okay. Due to the variation in the refractive index between core and gliding. Here N1 is the refractive index of the core. N2 is the refractive index of the gliding. N1 is always greater than N2. So due to the refractive index variation between these two, we can get the pulse spreading effect. Okay. So when the input signal is applied, here part of the optical energy is confined in the core. The remaining is transmitted through this gliding. For example, so here 80% of the optical energy is confined in this core. 20% is propagating through this gliding. But at the same time, the propagation of light signal in the gliding is faster than this core. So due to the variation in the group velocities also, it affects the signal at the output side. Do you all understand this concept? So here waveguide dispersion is caused by the difference in the refractive index between core and gliding with the different group velocities. Okay. Only a part of the optical power is confined in the core. The remaining is propagating through the gliding. Here light in the gliding propagates faster than the light propagation in the core so it causes different group velocities or different group delay in the fiber cable so this loss is negligible in the multi-mode fiber but in single mode fiber it is significant in the range of 1.27 micrometer okay so next we are going to derive the loss due to this waveguide dispersion waveguide dispersion results from the propagation constant of a fiber mode as well as from the variation in the group velocity. Okay. So here for a single mode fiber, the waveguide dispersion occurs when d squared beta by d lambda squared is not equal to zero with the condition beta that is propagation constant as a function of lambda. A by lambda, A is the radius of the core. Okay. First, we are going to consider the normalized propagation constant value that is beta is equal to 1 minus u a by v the whole squared. Consider this as the first equation that is the normalized propagation constant of the fiber cable. Here u is the normalized value a into n1 squared k squared minus beta squared the whole power 1 by 2. Here k is nothing but the free space propagation constant. Its value is 2 pi pi lambda. Okay. V is the normalized frequency that is also called as V number. Its value is equal to 2 pi a divided by lambda into n1 squared minus n2 squared the whole power 1 by 2. 2 pi pi lambda is nothing but k. So we can write V is equal to k a into n1 squared minus n2 squared the whole power 1 by 2. So now we are going to substitute these two values in the first equation. Okay. Then we can get B is equal to B means normalized propagation constant. Okay. That is equal to 1 minus A into U. U value is what? A into N1 squared K squared minus beta squared the whole power 1 by 2 divided by B value is K A into N1 squared minus N2 squared the whole power 1 by 2 the whole power Okay, then we can get a into a a squared. The whole squared is a power 4. Here 1 by 2 into 2, we can cancel the square root value. We can get the expression like this. 1 minus a power 4. n1 squared k squared minus beta squared divided by k squared a squared n1 squared minus n2 squared. Okay, then we can simplify this term like this. We can get 1 minus a squared into n1 squared k squared minus beta squared by k squared into n1 squared minus n2 squared. Okay. 
So next we have to assume the radius of the core as 1 micrometer. If it is 1 micrometer, this term becomes 1. Then B is equal to 1 minus N1 squared K squared minus beta squared divided by K squared N1 squared minus N2 squared. Okay. For further simplification, we can take this denominator value as common 1. For that, we can multiply this 1 with this value. So here B is equal to what? K squared into N1 squared minus N2 squared minus this value divided by K squared N1 squared minus N2 squared. In the next step, we have to multiply this value inside this. Okay. Then we can get B is equal to K squared N1 squared minus K squared N2 squared minus K squared N1 squared plus beta squared by K squared into N1 squared minus N2 squared. Then we can cancel these two terms, right? Then we can get B is equal to minus K squared N2 squared plus beta squared by K squared into N1 squared minus N2 squared. For further simplification, we are going to take this k squared as a common one from the numerator. So for that, we can multiply this beta squared with the value k squared by k squared. Okay, then we can take this k squared as a common one in the numerator. Then we can write beta squared by k squared minus n2 squared. Okay, the whole divided by k squared into n1 squared minus n2 squared. Then these two values are divided each other. Then B is equal to beta squared by K squared minus N2 squared by N1 squared minus N2 squared. So here we have to consider small index difference value. That means N1 is approximately equal to N2. Then its difference value is too small. For that value del is equal to N1 minus N2 by N2. From this we can get del N2 is equal to n1 minus n2. We can substitute this value in this one. Then the normalized propagation constant b is approximated to beta by k minus n2 by del n2. Okay. So from this we can move this del n2 to this side. Then b into del n2 is equal to beta by k minus n2. For further simplification we can take this k as a common one in the denominator. Then this term becomes beta minus n2 k by k. Then we have to move this k to this side. We can get the value as beta minus n2 k is equal to b k into del n2. So from this we can get the value of this beta by moving this value to this side. So here the propagation constant beta is equal to b k del n2 plus n2 k. So here we have to assume that the refractive index of the cladding n2 is independent of the wavelength lambda. So here we are going to differentiate the propagation constant with respect to free space propagation constant k. So here d beta by dk is equal to here n2 is a constant 1 with respect to lambda. We can take that value as such. We are going to differentiate this value with k. So this term becomes 1. So in the second term here, b, k both are representing the propagation constant. So here we can differentiate these two values because these two are a function of k. Do you all understand this one? So here del n2 into d of kb by dk. So consider this as the second equation. We are going to use the second equation to get the group delay due to waveguide dispersion. Okay. Next we are going to obtain the group delay due to waveguide dispersion. That is dou wg. Here group delay is the time required for a mode to travel along a fiber length L. That is how long a mode takes to travel along a length L in a fiber cable. We are going to express this group delay in terms of normalized propagation constant from waveguide dispersion using the formula L by C into D beta by DK. So here consider this as a third equation. Now we are going to substitute the second equation in this third equation for the term D beta by DK. Okay. So here we can simply substitute 
the second equation that is n2 plus n2 del d of kb by dk. You all understand this one. This is the group delay due to waveguide dispersion. So it can also be written in terms of normalized frequency v. So here we are going to replace this k that is the free space propagation constant with respect to this v number. This can be written like this L by C into N2 plus N2 del D of VB by DV. Okay, so here the first term represents the constant value. This second term represents the group delay due to the waveguide dispersion. So this factor is very very important in this waveguide dispersion. It can be written like this DVB by DV is equal to b into 1 minus 2 into jv squared ua by jv plus 1 into ua into jv minus 1 into ua. So here j represents the Bessel's function. a is the radius of the core. Here this u is nothing but what? k1 squared minus beta squared the whole power 1 by 2. Okay.